This video presents the interfacing of 12 key and 16 key keypads with Arduino. The Arduino is assembly program to detect key press and display the decimal value of the key on LEDs and MAC7219 display. We begin by interfacing this 16 key keypad with a microcontroller. This keypad has 8 lines. The first four from the left represent the row lines and the rest of the four represent the column lines. The row lines are interfaced to an output port of a controller while the columns are interfaced with an input port. One technique used by the microcontroller to detect a key press is to ground all of the rows of the keypad by sending a zero through the output port. Next, we read the status of the column lines through the input port. Now, when no key is pressed, the column lines should all read 1s. When a key is pressed, one of the lines will go low. Next, we locate the row at which the key was pressed. And once we find the row, we locate the pressed key. To locate the row, we begin by grounding the first row first and then we read the column values through the input port. If the value is all ones, it means no key has been pressed. So we move to the next row and we ground it and we check the value through the input port. Until we reach a row, let's say row 3, where the value is one of the column lines will have a zero value, indicating that a key has been pressed within row 3. Once we locate the row, the next thing is to locate the press key. The next slide will explain the algorithm used to find the press key within the row. This flowchart summarizes the steps needed for the microcontroller to detect a key press. We begin by grounding all of the rows. And then before we go and uh, read the column values, we need to make sure that all the keys on the keypad are open from any previous key presses. So we do this by reading the columns and then we check are all the keys open. If so, then we can go to the next step, which is to read the column values and then determine whether a key has been pressed. If not, then we go into this indefinite loop until we press a key. Once we press a key, then we wait for approximately 20 milliseconds to eliminate any bouncing from the key press. Before we go to the stage where we ground uh, each row one by one and check for a key press, we do a second pass on the detection of a key press just to confirm that the first pass didn't give us an erroneous uh, uh, result due to spike noise. So here we read the columns and then we check for key press. And once we have a key press, now we can go and ground the first row and then check the column values. Is there a key pressed? If not, then we go and ground the second row and we check the column values and so on. Until we have one of the rows, let's say row 3, uh, the column values read a key press, then we can go and find the key and then get the digit from a lookup table which we explained in the, in the next slide and then once we have the digit value for that uh, key press we can output the digit value to a digital port and then we jump to ground all rows and repeat the process and wait for another key press. In this slide I'll explain how when we press a key and then we identify the row and then within the row we determine the pressed key. So initially when no key is pressed the column values will be all ones. When we press any key then one of the column values will be zero indicating that a key is pressed. Once we establish that a key has been pressed the next step is to find the row. So we begin by grounding the first row and we read the column values and we see that one of the values is a zero indicating that 
a key has been pressed in row 1. So the next step is to determine which key has been pressed. Pre to find the position of the key press within row 1, we take the 4-bit column value and logically shift it to right until the carry flag becomes clear. We also assign a pointer to a lookup table of the first row, which has the four digits of the first row. At each shift of the column value, we increment the pointer value. Once the carry flag is cleared, then the pointer will have the position of the key press. A circuit diagram showing the interfacing of the 16 key keypad with the Arduino Uno is shown here. We have the four row lines are connected to the most significant nibble of port D which is programmed as a uh, output port while the four column lines are connected to the least significant nibble of port D which is programmed as an input port. We also have connected to port B four LEDs to indicate the value, the decimal value of the pressed key. A quick look at the assembly code. We make port B as output port and we set uh, the low nibble of port D as input and the high nibble as output. And then we ground all of the rows. Next we wait for key release and we do this by reading the value of uh, port D and then we mask it with F to keep the uh, least significant nibble which represents the column value. And then we compare this value with F. Now if they are equal it means no key has been pressed. Otherwise if they are not equal we jump to wait release and we have an indefinite loop until all the keys are released and we go to the next operation. Now we check for a key pressed we do this by getting the column values and comparing it with F. Now equal means that no key has been pressed. If so, then we jump to wait key press and we continue with this indefinite loop until a key is pressed. And then we apply some delay to cancel switch bounce. And then we do a second check for key press which ensures that the first key press was not erroneous due to spike noise. Once we detect a key press, we then ground the first row and then get the column value and then check whether a key has been pressed. If a key is being pressed, then we jump to this uh, subroutine, which is row 1 column. In subroutine row 1 column, we assign pointer Z to row 1 lookup table and pointer Z is associated with registers 30 and 31. And the lookup table for row 1 is located at label row 1 digits. The lookup table for row 1 is located at this label and the table is created by using the byte directive. And here we have the byte values which represent the decimal values for the uh, digits on the first row of the keypad. Back inside uh, subroutine row 1 column, we jump to subroutine find digit. In this subroutine, we logically shift the column value to the right, and then we check the carry flag whether it is set or cleared. And if the carry flag is cleared, it means we have located the digit and we jump to this label using the instruction branch uh, if carry is clear. 
Otherwise, if the carry is set, it means that uh, the digit has not been located yet. So we go to the next instruction, which is load program memory by incrementing the Z pointer by one. And then we jump to find digit and repeat the process. Once a digit is located, we jump to this label and we copy the uh, digit value in the lookup table pointed by Z into register R20 and then we output the value to the output port and display it on the LEDs and then we jump back to ground rows and repeat the process and wait for another key press. In this next example we have a 12 key keypad connected to port D and we have a MAC7219 module connected to port B using SPI interface. The programming of the MAC7219 module uh, is explained in detail in a previous video. A key press on the keypad will give us the decimal value of the button on the MAC7219 display. The assembly code of this second demonstration can be found in the link given in the video description. Thank you for watching.